Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Gary and on this video we're going to be doing a little th Fusion 360 work. Some of you may remember seeing this metal bender. It's the Ox Tool Co. Uh, rod bender design. This in its current state requires quite a bit of machining and you have to have a lathe and a mill to be able to, to create this. And I want to create a DIY version of it so that just anybody with a welder, a grinder, and maybe a drill press could easily do this at, at in their home garage. A few design changes, we're going to use Fusion 360 to remodel some of it and that's what this video is about. Let's get started on the design on this. So I'm going to pick out something, the, the easiest thing to do first. I'm going to start with this, uh, this top plate up here and this is called the fence and uh, so we'll get going and, and start making that. So uh, let's open the specific diagram so we can get the dimensions off of it. So it's, it's uh, seven inches overall, uh, two and a half inches wide. So seven inches long, two and a half inches wide. So let's go sketch that out real quick. So I'm gonna come here and make a new component. I'm gonna call this the fence. So we're gonna go up here and sketch a rectangle and we're just gonna do uh, a two-point rectangle. So I'm going to pick the face and I'm going to spin this around to the front and draw our rectangle here. So we know that this is going to be 2.5 and then so you just type that in the box and if you hit the tab key it will take you up to the top dimension and that is seven inches there. So now we have our rectangle so we can slide this into place and take a look at it. Alright so the next thing we're going to do is get the thickness of it and extrude it to the correct thickness. Um, so let's look at that again. The thickness is, it's a half inch thick. All right, so what we wanna do is stop the sketch and go and extrude this. And uh, just gonna extrude it forward and I'm gonna type in 0.5. And so now you see we have our, uh, our piece of half inch flat bar that's two and a half inches wide by uh, seven inches long. So now it's just a matter of putting those slots in there. All right, so uh, let's go take a look at that. And they're five and a, they're five and a half inches apart. So uh, if you take five and a half inches from seven and a half inches, you get an inch and a half. So that means it's three quarters from the outer edge, and the beginning of the slot is is a half inch from. You can see this half inch from here to here. So three quarter from one edge, half inch from the other. All right. So our um, yeah, the, the diameter is is 0.41. So it's it's an, it's a clearance hole for three eighths. So it's a four hundred ten thousand. So we'll go back and start that again. So we'll go uh, sketch a circle, center point circle. You can also just hit C on the keyboard. So we'll just drag that up and go point four one. So we have that now. And let's slide over. We're gonna repeat that and put another one here. Point four one. Put a line between them and. We're going to add a dimension to that and this is 5.5 as we know from the sketch all right and i'm going to make this a construction line because it's not actually going to be cut so now we got these 5.5 inches apart so now over here all we have to do is set this one in place and it should automatically have the dimension for that one so i'm going to go d here and go from there to there there we go So this is 0.5 that way. And from here to here, we know it's 0.75. All right, so now we have our, our two holes lined up. Um, now we have to, let's go back over to our, so we know from, from center to center, we've, we've got a one inch uh, slot. So we need to, to basically just duplicate that same process. And uh, we'll go and, and do that now. All right, so draw another circle here. And let's get the dimension on that. So 0 0.410. So I'll hit, I'll hit circle, just draw it, and draw it again out, uh, from the center, 0 0.410. And again, we wanna add our horizontal vertical constraint to this and that. So now they're on the same level. Um, and we want to, uh, 
I'm going to add a dimension from here to here. And that is one inch. So that should push both of them down. And then now I'm going to add a dimension from here to here. And it's 5.5. So now that these are both, you know, equal to each other and underneath. So now we just need to connect them together and, um, and make a slot out of them. And then we'll uh, extrude them through. All right. So really it's just a matter of drawing a couple of lines. So we'll put a line, if you hold down the shift key, it'll ride along the edge of it there. So we'll put a line there and there, and it'll come and do it again, shift key. And it kind of locks onto the point there. All right, so now you see we have that. We'll come and do that on this side. And you see it added these little circles here. That means it's got a, a tangent constraint on those lines. So now I'm gonna hit T for the trim key, and I'm just gonna come and trim out these circles to turn this into a slot. So it'll stop sketch. And I want to hit ext uh, E for extrude. And so we want to select that and that. And we are going to push those through. So, yeah, we're going to go through that way. And then on the distance here, we're just going to select all. And that will push it all the way through. And the operation is cut. So we'll hit OK. And then now you see we have our, our part model up. All right, so this next thing we're going to do here is uh, make this part right here. And this is called the pivot boss. So we'll take a look at the details of it. And you can see it's, um, you know, this is a, a great piece where you can use DOM tubing. Um, this is a one and a half inch OD with a, with a three quarter inch ID. And the overall length of it from end to end is an inch and a half. Now here's a design change that we're going to make to make this uh, more friendly to a DIY type person. You see these three uh, uh, bolts here that you use to, to capture the bottom plate. Well, you, you would really need a mill um, with a DRO to do this because you'd want to get the coordinates of this, um, you know, the whole pattern spaced out. Or you could do it on a CNC machine pretty easily. Uh, but again, for the home DIY person, uh, we're going to eliminate those three holes because uh, all they really do is serve to hold the bottom plate on and we're just going to insert a nut in the center of this and, and weld it in. All right. So one of the things that's kind of cool is you can go to McMastercar.com um, and pretty much everything they sell, they actually have drawings of it available. So you can see we've picked out a 7 16th nut. Um, and you can see you get over here, you can uh, select what drawing type you want. We can pick a few different ones of these that'll be able to import into Fusion, but I'm just gonna pick this, the 3D SolidWorks model in, and you can see that got downloaded there um, with a funky name. So we'll go back over to Fusion, and in our uh, folder here, we'll do an import, select files, and go to our downloads folder, and there is that nut. So we'll just go ahead and get that uploaded. All right, you see we have our, uh, our nut um, imported in there. Okay, so um, we want to now go ahead and sketch out the other part and then we'll, we'll drag this nut over uh, once we're, we're done. All right, so we wanna, um, we're gonna create a circle, center point circle, and um, I'm gonna go to my front face and I'm going to drag this out and we know the outside diameter of the OD is 1.5 and um, from here it's really pretty easy. We want to stop sketch. We're going to hit E for extrude. Go ahead and extrude this to 1.5. All right, so now we have a solid body here. And now we need to put a hole in the in the center of it that's um, that is three quarters of an inch. So we will go and create a sketch, and we want to sketch on that face, and we want to create a again another circle. We're going to drag from the center out to lock that into the center. So 0.750 to get our in, internal diameter, and then now we just need to extrude that. So 
go up here and stop sketch and uh, hit E for extrude and we want to extrude that and we're going to go that way and we'll come here and say distance all that will push it all the way through and the operation is cut we want to cut the hole through there all right so that is it to get the all right guys uh, so um, rather than do the import and re uh, or the download and re-import into Fusion 360 there's actually an easier way um, if you go to insert here, you can see right here, you can go out to McMaster car and then just, you know, we'll just put in the part number that we found earlier and click find. And that brings up our part number. And from here you can go and do the import right into inside the interface rather than go in, uh, external. So, um, we got that taken care of. Um, and now you can see our nut is inserted. Uh, in there and it will just you know do some little tack welds it doesn't have to be really strong for what we're doing here um, and then you know contrast that or compare that to you know having to drill um, three quarter 20 bolts and get the pattern matched up to the to the end plate that comes up the nuts just a, a quicker and easier way for the DIY type guy to to get the same thing accomplished so um, so that's it all right, well, that wraps up the video. Uh, hopefully, I didn't bore you guys too much. And I just wanted to point out that I am certainly not an expert on th Fusion 360. I'm very much a beginner, just now learning. Um, and recently took a class at, uh, from John Saunders, and, and Kevin was the instructor there at NYC CNC. If you're interested in learning Fusion 360, download it, get a copy of it. It's free if you're a student or a hobbyist or you own a small business. Uh, pretty much the only people that have to pay for it is if you're a big company. Um, so you can get a copy of it easily um, and just start learning it. And then at some point when you've gotten a little bit familiar with it, it'd probably be good to go take the class. Um, so a shout out to John Saunders and also uh, Tom Lipton at Ox Tool Co. for his original design. I want to give a lot of credit to him. So stay tuned for upcoming videos in the very near future on a complete DIY set of videos and plans available to create this bender. And you guys probably have seen me use this in a few previous videos, but it's a pretty neat little setup um, that hopefully with these changes, I can get uh, where it's available to buy all the parts for it really cheaply. And then the videos, a how to on how to, you know, get it all put together and come up with something that's pretty inexpensive for guys in the home shop. All right. Thanks everybody. Have a good one.